is me, Queen Skelly here, and this is a brand new playlist called Top 5. So I got this idea from Harley Baby, so thank you so much, Harley Baby. Her channel is linked in the description box and is permanently linked in the description box. <laughs> so today's Top 5 is going to be Top 5 Favorite Movies. Now, normally how people would do this is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm doing it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because I want to be different. I just That's just how I ended up writing it, and I made a mistake doing that, so that's just how it's going to work. So how my top fives are going to work, each one's going to be different. So for the top five movies, I'm going to be telling you guys my favorite movie, reading you a couple of synopses that I found on, or a couple of summaries that I found on IMDb, and then tell you guys why it's my favorite movie, and we're going to do that for each movie to make, give this video some length. <laughs> Alright guys, so my first favorite movie... This should come as no surprise, it is The Nightmare Before Christmas. So here are a couple of plot summaries for The Nightmare Before Christmas. Plot summary one. Jack Skellington, king of Halloween Town, discovers Christmas Town, but his attempts to bring Christmas to his home causes confusion. Plot summary two. Jack Skellington, the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, is bored with doing the same thing every year for Halloween. One day he stumbles into Christmas Town and is so taken with the idea of Christmas that he tries to get the resident bats ghouls and goblins of halloween to help him put on christmas instead of halloween but alas they can't get it quite right plot summary three jack skellington is in a dark halloween town all of the time and wants something a little more cheery to balance his life experience he stumbles upon christmas town and is just of what the doctor ordered he is so elated with his new feelings that he tries to share them with his halloween town citizens but the atmosphere is not conducive to Jack's newfound sensibility. Plot summary 4. Jack Skellington, the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, decides to spread Christmas joy to the world, but his well-meaning mission unwittingly puts Santa Claus and in jeopardy and creates a nightmare for all good little boys and girls everywhere. Who will save Christmas? Plot summary 5. It is the same routine every year in Halloween Town. On, on Halloween, the monsters come out and perform a real scare. This particular Halloween, the Pumpkin King, Jack Skellington, bored of the idea, saunters off into the woods with his dog, Zero, after Halloween night. Upon the break of dawn, he discovers a clearing of trees with different doors representing various holidays. The Christmas tree door attracts his attention, and upon entrance into the world of Christmas, Jack is fascinated with his new idea of Christmas that he wants, that he must absolutely share with the citizens of Halloween Town. Plot Summary 6 Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King of Halloween Town, is tired of the same old thing every year. He wanders into a forest and finds some holiday trees and each has a town in it. He goes to the Christmas one and finds himself a Christmas town. He likes the idea, tells the citizens, and they decide to make their own Christmas with their own, with their own twist. Okay, so why is The Nightmare Before Christmas my favorite movie? Well, I made a Confession to Jack Skellington video years and years and years ago that you guys can go watch. However, um, I guess I could explain it here too. So, uh, when I was 10, I was, well, basically since I started school, I was being bullied and things got really bad for me, unfortunately. I kind of fell down the rabbit hole, so to speak, pretty badly. It got really, really bad for three years. And then when I turned 13, I watched the movie and I took it to the point where I noticed that Jack was trying to change his life for the better and it nearly killed him in the end. And what I was doing to myself nearly killed me in the end. So I figured my life was going to get better at that point, and for nine years I've been super obsessed with it, and I just, I have, you know, the movie to thank for saving my life, so that's why it means so much to me. My next favorite movie is Child's Play 2019. Alright guys, here's a couple of plot summaries for Child's Play 2019. Plot summary one. A mother gives her 13-year-old son a toy doll for his birthday, unaware of its more sinister nature. Plot summary two. After moving to a new city, young Andy Barkley receives a special present from his mother, a seemingly innocent buddy doll that becomes his best friend. When the doll suddenly takes on a life of its own, Andy unites with other neighborhood children to stop the sinister toy from wreaking bloody havoc. Plot Summary 3 The toy buddy with artificial intelligence is the great sensation of the Castle Inter Industries. When a programmer is fired by his supervisor in a Vietnam factory, he cancels the security protocols of one of the toys, and then he commits suicide. The mother of the lonely 13-year-old Andy Barkley gives a buddy t to him for his birthday, and the toy becomes his best friend. But soon Andy notes that something is wrong with his buddy, and together with his new friends, Faylene and Pug, they try to stop him. So why is Child's Play 2019 my second favorite movie versus maybe the older Child's Play movies? 
Now, not gonna lie, I do love the original Child's Play. I've seen the original one from the 1980s. I have not seen two or three. Um, I should because one of them is actually Hubby's favorite Child's Play from the series. I have seen Bride of Chucky and I have seen Seed of Chucky. I have also seen Curse of Chucky. I did not like it and I refused to see Cult of Chucky. I do like the originals that I have seen. In fact, Seed of Chucky is one of my, is my other favorite from, is actually my ultimate favorite from the entire series. But the reason why I am picking Child's Play 2019 is because I have seen a lot of doll movies. I love doll movies. In fact, I love dolls. I freaking love dolls. I have a bunch of porcelain dolls stacked away in a box right now, which are going to eventually come up and be put on display in my room. But the reason why I thought this one was so interesting was because it was AI gone wrong. Now, I know there's a lot, probably a lot of horror movies out there that have done AI gone wrong, but especially when you take a cult classic like Chucky, where it was he was possessed by Charles Lee Ray, you know, and now you get an AI because, you know, a guy was fired from his position and just wanted to cause hell, you know. I think that was a very interesting idea, and not only that, but it really, like, touches on the newer, um generation in terms of like what they would probably understand more because a lot back then like technology obviously wasn't as you know present as it is now it was just barely starting to develop so the fact that they made a child's play that was pretty much based on technology gone wrong was actually pretty good and I loved how they did it and I have a soft spot for Mark Hamill and also the girl who played um Andy's mom who I know is April from Parks and Rec so it was really cool to see her in a horror movie because with her personality in Parks and Rec I figured it was bound you know to happen that we were gonna see her in a <laughs> in a uh, horror movie so my third favorite movie is Sleeping Beauty Sleeping Beauty plot summary one after being snubbed by the royal family a malevolent fairy places a curse on the princess which only a prince can break along with the help of three good fairies Plot summary 2. After the beautiful Princess Aurora is born into royalty, everyone gathers to celebrate. Everything is perfectly fine until an unwanted guest appears, the evil fairy Maleficent. Maleficent curses the young princess and announces that she will die by pricking her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel before sunset on her 16th birthday. Fortunately, one of the good fairies, Meriwether, changes the spell so Aurora will fall into a deep sleep instead and the only way to wake her from her sleep is true love's kiss. Finally, the day comes. Plot summary 3. Adaptation of the fairy tale of the same name, Princess Aurora is cursed by the evil witch Maleficent, who declares that before the sun sets on, the, on Aurora's 16th birthday, she will die by pricking her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel. To try to prevent this, the fairies allow the king agrees to place her into hiding, in the care of three good-natured but not too bright fairies. Plot Summary 4 When a new princess is born to King Stefan and his queen, the entire kingdom rejoices. At a ceremony, the three good fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, bestow gifts of magic on the child. But an evil sorceress named Malef Maleficent shows up. Because of this rude remark by Meriwether, she places a curse on the princess that she will die before her sunset on her 16th birthday after pricking her finger on the spinning wheel spindle. Thankfully, Meriwether turns things around by casting a spell that will allow the princess named Aurora to fall into a deep sleep and awaken to a kiss from her, her true love. The fairies take Aurora to a cottage in the woods to keep her away from the eyes of Maleficent and raise her as their own child, named Briar Rose. On her 16th birthday, Aurora meets Prince Philip, the son of a king whose own kingdom will soon merge with King Stephen's and falls in love. Maleficent's horrible prophecy is fulfilled when, the, when she tricks Aurora into pricking her finger on the spinning wheel's spindle and falling asleep, then capturing Prince Philip. Realizing that the prince is in trouble, the three good fairies head to Maleficent's castle at the Forbidden Mountain, but the prince soon finds himself against Maleficent's army of brutes and the power of Maleficent's evil spells, which include a thorn forest and a fight against Maleficent when she turns herself into a dragon. So why is Sleeping Beauty my third favorite movie and why isn't it like my second or my first? Well granted, she is my princess. Not gonna lie, she is my princess. However, you guys also have to realize I am a huge horror movie freak. <laughs> So horror movies are going to be mixed in there. I'm not a big action movie fan, and I'm definitely not a big fan of, like, romance movies either. It's either horror or Disney. There's really no in-between here. I have only just recently become a very big fan of Aurora. I really didn't know, like, how much I loved her, really, until I think it was Harley Baby who had asked me who my favorite Disney princess was, and I was like, you know, I never really thought about it. But then looking back at my childhood and how... 
you know, I had all these VHSs of Disney movies, which ones I would watch regularly. Now, I love Snow White. That was one I would frequently watch as a, as a little kid, and I learned how to use the fast-forward button because of that movie. But I think, looking back between all of the princess movies, between, you know, Jasmine's movie, Aurora's movie, you know, all of these movies, I always drew closer to Aurora's movie. So I think that's why I really chose her to be my favorite princess, because I loved her movie so much out of all Disney princess movies. So, yes, that is why Sleeping Beauty is my third favorite movie. On to my fourth favorite movie, it's actually not a movie, it's a franchise. It's the Saw movie franchise, but uh, we are only going to be reading sino uh, summaries from Saw 1, because I don't want to end up reading every single plot summary from all eight movies of Saw, so... <laughs> Saw franchise, plot summary 1. Two strangers who awaken in a room with no recollection of how they got there soon discover their pawns in a deadly game per perpetrated by a notorious serial killer. Plot summary 2. Waking up in a bathroom, two men, Adam and Dr. Lawrence Gordon, discover they have been captured by the infamous Jigsaw Killer. The men must escape before the time runs out, otherwise they will, for they will face the deadly consequences. Plot Summary 3. Two strangers, freelance photographer Adam Stanheit and Dr. Lawrence Gordon, awaken in a dilapidated bathroom with no memory of how they ended up there. Both men find a tape recording each in their pockets and not an un and not long after listening to them, realize they have been trapped in a game perpetrated by the infamous Jigsaw Killer. Escape seems unlikely at first, but Adam and Lawrence soon realize they may have a chance, but at what cost? And are they and are they alone? Plot Summary 4 Two men wake up at opposite sides of a dirty, dis, disused bathroom, chained by their ankles to pipes. Between them lies a dead man loosely clutching a handheld tape player and a handgun. Each finds a tape of the player for the player in their back pocket. They play the tapes. One is threatened, the other one isn't. But they have a task. One must kill the other by six, or his wife and daughter will die. They find hacksaws in a toilet and try to cut the chains, but it doesn't work. They are the two newest victims of the Jigsaw Killer. In a flashback, we learn of Amanda, a girl who falls victim to the Jigsaw Killer. On her head is a mask, which is hooked onto her lower jaw. There is a timer on it. Only one key will unlock it, and that key is in the digestive tract of her cellmate, who lies paralyzed on the opposite side of the room. If she doesn't unlock the mask in time, her lower jaw will be ripped wide open. She survives, but her cellmate doesn't. Through a series of flashbacks, we learn of more victims and of the nearly successful capture of the Jigsaw Killer, who doesn't actually kill the victims. Instead, he finds ways to make them kill each either themselves or each other, and he thinks the entire game out perfectly with no other ways out or so it would seem so why do i love the saw movie franchise as much as i do well because i am totally into torture porn that is as simple as i can put it this this franchise literally has been with me for a while i watched the first movie uh, i think back in high school and then like i've always wanted to just watch all of the movies in its entirety but at the time i don't think all movies had been released yet so now that all movies have been released from Saw 1 to Jigsaw. I bought the 8-pack collection, and we I think we're on movie 5 now, but we haven't really touched it because we've been getting a bunch of movies in, and we've been getting a bunch of other stuff in. But yes, I love that each Saw movie is unique in terms of the traps and in terms of, you know, the storyline. It's just overall a very unique movie franchise, at least in my opinion. And I know a lot of people say that after a while, the stories get repetitive and it starts to get kind of dull, but I highly disagree. These movies are beautiful, these movies are fun, these movies are fantastic and very well thought out, and these traps are hella creative. Like, I think I really only watch it for the traps, so I'm really thinking about it. Like, I love the movies, like the, the storyline, because it's a very sad storyline. But I think when it comes down to it, I'm just like, what are the traps, what are the traps, what are the traps? But my favorite trap of all is the um, angel trap. So basically, um, it's this trap that hooks onto your rib cage, and the lady had to get like a key out of a vat of acid, and she had to unlock it. But she like spoiler ahead, she did unlock it, but she couldn't get it out of her chest. So, you know, it ended up killing her, which is a whole other storyline within itself. But you guys should go watch the Saw movie franchise if you haven't, or if you don't really like horror movies, then don't bother. <laughs> Anyways, so my final favorite movie is A Nightmare on Elm Street, specifically the first one. A Nightmare on Elm Street, plot summary one. The monstrous spirit of a slain child murderer seeks revenge by invading the dreams of teenagers whose parents were responsible for his untimely death. Plot summary two. 
On Elm Street, Nancy Thompson and a group of her friends compromise, comprising of Tina Gray, Ra Lane, and Glenn Lance are being tormented by a clawed killer in their dreams named Fred Krueger. Nancy must think quickly as Fred tries to pick them off one by one. When he has you in, his, in your sleep, who is there to save you? Plot Summary 3 Nancy is having nightmares about a frightening, body-scarred figure who wears a glove with razor-sharp finger knives. She soon discovers that her friends are having similar dreams. When the kids begin to die, Nancy realizes that she must stay awake to survive, uncovering the secret identity of the dream killer and his connection with the children of Elm Street. The girl plots to draw him out into the real world. Plot Summary 4 In the early 1980s, a psychopath named Freddy, Fred Krueger, known as the Springwood Slasher, murdered several children with a glove outfitted with straight razor blades attached to his fingers. When a foolish decision by a judge sets Kruger free, an ongoing, an angry mob of parents whose children he terrorized or murdered burned Kruger alive in the boiler room where he worked. Years after his death, the living children of the parents responsible for Kruger's death, including Nancy Thompson, daughter of the police officer who arrested Kruger, experienced terrifying nightmares involving a burned man wearing a glove with razor blades on the fingers. The ghost of Fred Kruger haunts their dreams, and when Nancy's best friend Tina dies violently in her sleep during a dream con confrontation with Kruger, Nancy realizes she must find a way to stop the evil psychopath's reign of terror or never sleep again. Plot Summary 5 Kruger is the substance of nightmares. He always appears strangely dressed and has knives on his fingers on his right hand. A group of four teenagers all begin to have the same strange dream about Fred before one of them is gruesomely murdered in her sleep. The survivors soon realize that if Fred kills them in their sleep, then they will die in real life too. Thus begins an order, an ordeal of wakefulness as they try to find some way to stop Fred. Plot Summary 6 Nancy and her friends suffer violent nightmares which all feature in one common element, a disfigured serial killer with a glove made of razor, ra razors on his right hand. When one of the group is murdered while asleep, Nancy realizes that she must stay awake and try to uncover the truth behind this phantasmic killer, Fred Krueger. Alright guys, so why is A Nightmare on Elm Street my fifth favorite movie? Well, I never really intended it to be, you know, one of my favorite movies. I had only ever watched the first movie once, and even then, I don't remember it that well. However, uh, last year, I don't know how, but for some reason, I don't know, I remember. So last year, um, every year, Holly Baby and I, ever since we've known each other, have thrown a Halloween party. And last year, we decided to do Freddy versus Jason. And I, we were kind of talking, like, who would take Freddy, who would take Jason. And I asked her, hey, is there any way I can be Freddy? Because, you know, I love the idea of a guy having, like, knives for, you know, f razor blades on his fingers, you know, slashing kids in their dreams. Because when you're asleep, no one's really there to protect you in your dreams. You're pretty much on your own. And it's really, really scary. And not only that, but I have a prop replica of his glove in my closet, which is really, really cool. I did payments on it, and I officially have it. It only took me about three weeks to pay it off, thank God. So ever since then, I've just developed a real liking for A Nightmare on Elm Street, and I know for sure one of the things I'm going to do while I'm staying at home is watch all the movies. I, I really just want to watch all the movies, except for the newest Nightmare on Elm Street because I've seen the makeup on that guy, and I've heard reviews, and apparently it's not very good, so I'll just go ahead and skip that one. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my first ever Top 5 video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next Top 5 video. Bye little skeletons. Stay safe. I love you guys.